Hello and welcome to Hope City Online. You're about to hear a message that's part of a series. Check it out and consider joining us in person on Sunday. Our vision for you is that you'd have a thriving relationship with Jesus, that you know Him, find community, and discover your purpose as you prioritize your relationship with God. Get in touch with us at hopecity.my slash hello for more details and subscribe to our Hope City KL YouTube and podcast channels so you don't miss any of our future content. Enjoy this message from Mabel Wong who oversees our pastoral care ministry. everyone. I hope that the new year has been going really well for all of you. Um, if we've never met, my name is Mabel and I'm one of the leaders here at Hope City KL and we are a vibrant church here in Pataling Jaya, Malaysia. So if you've never been to our physical location, this is a personal invitation for you to come and join us for our services. We have um, services in person every Sunday at 11 a.m. and we would love to have you come and join us uh, to worship together, to be in the presence of God together and just fellowship as a community of Jesus. Um, I don't know how your New Year resolutions have been going, um, but on the 1st of January, I decided, you know, I'm going to get my health in order. Let's go and get some exercise. So I went for a swim and then I caught a cold. And which is why I sound a little bit nasally today, so I'm so sorry for that, but I'm on the road of recovery. Um, but some of you may have New Year's resolutions to exercise more or to eat better. I don't know if, if we have any health buffs in the house or anyone who is even following this specific, I don't know, diet or meal plan um, for this new year. But let me tell you a very funny story. Um, so last year, um, at the end of the, the year, a few of our leaders came together and we decided to plan ahead for our church. And so after that, we went for this uh, celebration dessert <laughs> at um, this ice cream place. And I don't know how that the conversation began, but you know, we started talking about like serious stuff like uh, medical checkups and our health and the food that we eat and how like it impacts us and how some of our friends like um, they look like they're really healthy they lead healthy lifestyles but then they have like issues like high cholesterol or i don't know high blood sugar and and things like that right and it was really ironic because while we were having this serious discussion about our health we were in an ice cream cafe, stuffing our faces with ice cream and waffles. I found that really, really, really funny. Um, but anyway, <clears throat> excuse me. The holy habits that we are going to be talking about. This is a new series here at Hope City to kick us off this year. This series is going to be like a meal plan for our spirits. You know, what we feed ourselves daily will affect the way that we feel and the way that we function um, but also in the long run it affects our overall health i'm sure we all know that and the same thing is for our spiritual lives like how many of us we tend to feed ourselves junk food but then uh, expect ourselves to just feel strong and healthy i believe that in order to be healthy thriving and strong people of God, we have to be intentional with what we feed our souls. Most Christians, myself included, we don't live very intentionally, but we tend to live more functionally. Like we tend to have a tendency to go into autopilot mode. And um, I know the new year has just started and most of you might have been just, you know, getting back into work mode, but um, we have our cram schedules and endless to-do lists, demanding jobs and demanding families. There's this constant noise that's going on. There's information bombardment and our anxieties keep increasing. But our pace of life 
increase as well instead of slowing down. And at the end of the day, all we want to do is just shut off, switch on Netflix and watch our favorite shows, um, or even just scroll mindlessly on social media just to relax and just to de-stress or decompress. But with this kind of lifestyle where we're endlessly giving and we're working so hard, but yet we're feeding ourselves junk food, how do we expect then to survive or to thrive in this world as disciples of Jesus? Well, the solution, it is found in John 15. So I'm going to read right now from John 15 verse 5. If you've got your Bibles around with you, you can open that. Uh, but if not, the verse will be on the screen. This is Jesus saying, I am the vine and you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. Ouch. I'm going to go to verse 9 now. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Now remain in my love. If you keep my commands, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commands and remain in His love. I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. You know, the call here is very simple, but it's also very, very hard to do. Jesus is calling us to abide, to remain, to continue to stay. It's an active verb. He wants us to abide in a relationship with him, and it needs to be something that is intentional. Now, Jesus understood how easy it is for his disciples and for us living here today in 2023 to fall away from him as we live in a world where it's just endless distractions, temptations, there's all of these lies that we're hearing and there are hardships that can so easily pull us away from being in a relationship with Him. And therefore, the choice of remaining in Jesus needs to be an active one. And as we choose to remain in Him, we also receive His love and His joy. And hence, that's why the title of my message today is Happy Meal. But our call and our purpose as disciples of Jesus is to be fruitful. And what does that mean? Well, the typical meaning of fruitful is actually producing or abounding in fruit. But when you describe someone um, as being fruitful, you know, we usually imagine that person being extremely productive, bountiful, effective, someone who's flourishing in life. Therefore, we need to connect to the true vine, which is Jesus, who is our source of nutrients, who is the one who will replenish us so that we can be filled and then we can be fruitful and provide for others. And to stay connected to Jesus then, this means that we need to intentionally cultivate holy habits as part of our everyday world. Now, if we don't make it a point to keep our connection with Jesus alive, then as we live this busy day-to-day -day life, there's going to be a sense of heaviness. Anxiety is going to creep in and just take over our lives. We're going to go back to sinful habits. We're going to always be struggling with life and living a life without joy. So to ensure that we're constantly filled, we need to build a well first. We need to fill it up so that as we give out, we will never run dry or feel depleted. You know, church, we don't only pray when we need help, but God is faithful and He's just so full of grace and He always will still answer us. We don't read the Bible only when we need counsel. We don't fast only when we want something from God. For those of us who have been Christians uh, for a while, you know, we actually know what to do. What I'm saying today is not new. It's not something that, you know, you're hearing for the very first time because I'm pretty sure you've heard different pastors preach about it, talk about it on the pulpit countless of times. And it's something that as Christians, this has been ingrained in the very fiber of our psyche. We know it, but we struggle to do it. And I'll be the very first one to raise my hand to say that 
I've struggled reading my Bible and praying. And I know a lot of you are going to go, what? You know, Mabel, you are preaching and you are a leader at Hope City. Well, yes, because I am human and like you, I struggle as well to keep disciplines like this. We all know what we need to do and part of us, you know, really wants to do it. And then the other part um, just sometimes just feels like, oh, I don't want to do it. And there are so many good hab habits like, you know, exercising or eating well, sleeping early. We all know the benefits of it, but why can't we just do it? Well, first of all, I want to say this to you, that the last thing I want for you to feel is a sense of guilt. My purpose of sharing this message with you today is not to load guilt on you. It's not to make you feel guilty about not praying enough or not reading the Bible enough. Because if you are doing this out of guilt, trust me, it will not last. In fact, that feeling of guilt will create a bigger barrier between you and God. So don't do it because you feel bad. Rather, what I really want all of us to do as a church and as people of God is to learn to delight in the process of being in a relationship with God. Now, these holy habits are not an end, but rather it is a means to an end. And our end goal is actually to be in relationship and intimacy with our Heavenly Father. God isn't pleased if we are doing it just for the sake of doing it, you know, just as to complete a task or to take a to-do list so that we feel like we've done our job as a Christian and, you know, just give ourselves a good pat on the back. Like, I've read my Bible, I've prayed, I'm doing really well as a Christian. No, these holy habits are there so that we can draw closer to God, so that we can abide in our relationship with Jesus. But on the other hand, I don't want us to get fixated on these habits that if you miss one, you feel like God is displeased or angry at you. Let's not end up like the Pharisees where we idolize these habits rather than using them to get closer to God. But more than anything, I want this to be a revelation of how it is actually a delight and a privilege to be in such an intimate relationship with God. It is our love for God that will drive us to respond back to His love for you and I. And to get there, we first have to experience and we first need to have that revelation of God's love for me and you. You know, we had this discussion um, at dinner parties uh, during one of the weeks and um, you know, someone brought up a question of, you know, how, how do you have a relationship with God? How do you know God is near? How do you cultivate that intimacy with God? And so right now, I want you to just stop and think of someone uh, that you really love and someone that you are very close to. I mean, it could be your parents, it could be your siblings, it could be your spouse, your best friend, or even uh, a friend that you grew up during childhood with and it's just as simple as intentionally carving out time with that person so that you can both grow deeper in your relationship with each other i mean if i'm close to someone i would make time to see them i really want to see them i would um, buy presents for them i would make time to talk to them tell them about my feelings how i'm doing and also listen to how they are feeling or how they're doing now just replace that person with God. Growing in your relationship with Jesus is just taking time out to spend with Him in prayer, in worship, in fasting, meditation, reading the Bible. We want to learn about His nature, who He is, learn about His characteristics and His desires. These holy habits are ways for you and I to develop that relationship with God. And the more we do it, the more intimate we will know God. Now, Jesus himself demonstrated this by constantly removing himself away from his disciples, the crowd and his work, his ministry, just so that he can be alone with his father. 
And so the holy habit that we're going to be talking about today is what I call silence and solitude. You know, Jesus regularly went by himself, seeking out solitary places to be with God. I'll give you a couple of examples. Matthew 4, 1 to 11, Jesus inaugurated his ministry by spending 40 days alone in the desert. Luke 6, 12, Jesus spent the entire night alone in the desert hills before he chose the 12 disciples. Mark 6, 31, when the 12 returned from preaching and healing mission, Jesus instructed them. He said, come away by yourselves to a lonely place. Luke 5, 16, following the healing of a leper, Jesus withdrew to the wilderness and prayed. You know, I can just list so many different examples of Jesus doing that, but you get what I'm trying to say. If Jesus was God himself and yet he practiced and he made it a habit to be alone with his father. I think Jesus is trying to teach us that the busier we get, the more time we need to spend in silence and solitude with God. You know, silence and solitude is this practice. I don't know how many of you have heard of it or it might be the very first time you are hearing of this, um, but it is a time where we intentionally set aside to be in the presence of our Father, just to be, without asking, without doing anything, but just being in His presence, receiving, and just being overwhelmed by His love for us. And it is in that stillness that we can hear the quiet whisper of God. It is in this time that we are actively listening where we try to quieten down all distractions and all the noise, we shut it off so that we can actually hear that still small voice of the Holy Spirit speaking to us. You know, I once listened to this podcast where the pastor um, said this. He said that the voice of the Holy Spirit is like a feather that is brushing up against your arm. You can feel it if you are alone and if you are still, but not if you are in a crowded and overwhelming place. Or the Holy Spirit is like a tiny pebble that ripples through the water. If the water is still and calm, we won't miss it. But if the water is turbulent and rushing through, then we would miss that tiny ripple in the water. I'm not asking you friends to find a desert or an isolated island um, and go spend like a week there. No, I think that this practice of silence and solitude, it is a state of the mind and the heart, then it is a place. And silence can be the most daunting thing for a lot of people, especially in social situations. Can you imagine going on a date and your date stays silent the whole entire time? Like how awkward or how excruciating is that? Or when you're in a meeting or discussion and everyone stays quiet. I know our dinner party discussion leaders probably understand me the most when I say this. And there's something really uncomfortable about silence. It could be the fear of not being in control or not knowing what the other person or other persons are thinking. There's this feeling of helplessness that is attached to it. Because silence is intimately related to trust. Which is why there are some people that you can just comfortably sit silently around. But it does take time to build that relationship and trust. In Psalms 46.10, it says, Be still and know that I am God. Let's pause on this verse for a little while. Be still. To be quiet and to not do anything. You know, the Hebrew word here means actually to slacken which means to release, to let drop, to relax. And when we do that, then we will know 
then that's when we decide, we choose to allow God to be God. Because He is in control so that you and I don't have to be. And these moments of silence and solitude that we set aside daily, this will help us to remember and to acknowledge who God is in our lives. The very will of letting go also gives us more space to be present with God and to be present with other people. It takes the focus off ourselves and it helps us to see what God is doing right now in and through us. You know, I have been practicing this silence and solitude um, for a while and I can tell you that it is challenging. It is actually a very difficult thing to do to switch off and to be really present with God because every time I try to do it, there are all these thoughts that will come in or I'll start fidgeting or I will start doing something else to just try to feel that feeling of silence and sitting around not doing anything. But I've been trying to include that into my daily routine and I can say that the times that I've really spent in silence and solitude with God, I am less stressed, I am less irritable, I am less flustered, I am able to be present with the people and love them because I have first received that love from the Father. I am more present as a wife and a daughter. I am a more patient teacher, I teach the violin by the way. I am also able to give out in ministry and care because I first filled my tank up before giving out. So here are three very quick practical steps to help you get started with silence and solitude. The first one, start ridiculously small. Now some of you while you're hearing that, you're already thinking like, okay, how can I do one whole week of silence and solitude? Well, <laughs> I want you to start small. Because I, when I first started this, I thought like, okay, let's do an hour and I failed miserably. Um, I want you to start small because when you start small, it makes it more palatable. It makes it easier for you to get into the routine. And slowly as you do that, you can increase the length of time. Start five minutes a day. And if that's hard, start one minute a day or even 30 seconds, whatever fits you. Just remember that these habits, again, are meant for us to be in a relationship with God. It's not about the length of time, it's about just showing up. Which comes to my second point, be consistent. As with any habits that we want to develop, it's about showing up and it's about just being consistent until this becomes part of your everyday life. And I don't know how many of you are perfectionists, but I am. And I remember there are a few days where, you know, I didn't show up or where I completely forgotten or, you know, life just got busy and then I ended up not doing it. I just felt so discouraged and just wanted to throw in the towel. Don't do that. Don't be a perfectionist. It's fine if you miss a couple of days, but just keep showing up, keep going. What really helps is for you to set a time. Maybe it could be a time where right after you wake up, you just spend like that three minutes being in the presence of God. Or it could be while you're driving to work, being stuck in traffic jam. Like I did that this morning before coming to film. And I can say that um, this thought just came to me. Imagine you showing up at work in the morning after horrible jam where everyone is grumpy and sleepy but you go in there with joy radiating on your face just because you have just been in the presence of God you have taken time to just spend with Jesus before going to work imagine what a great testimony that would be could be maybe at the start of your lunch break before you sleep I don't know pick what's best for you and don't be afraid to tweak it if it doesn't work just find something that works for your schedule, for your current season. You could even set reminders or do it with somebody so that there's accountability. And the third point is get rid of distractions. Silent your phone. All notifications, even better, like put it in a different room or just put it away 
where you can just actively reach it. Try to go to a place where you can be alone. Like it could be in any room in your house, it could be your garden, your car, your rooftop. And if you're a parent, um, you could wake up earlier before your children or your little ones wake up so that you have a little bit of time uh, to yourself and also a little time to spend with God before your day begins. We're going to end today's message by spending a couple of minutes just in silence and solitude. So please join me if your environment allows you to. But before we do that, I want to close just by saying that, first of all, our starting point is to have the desire to be with God and to love Him first. Because without this, then the holy habits that I've been talking about will then just be a set of religious to-do lists, which will not bring any joy into your life at all, but instead it will be dull drudgery. So maybe for some of you today, your first step is to ask God to bring fresh revelation of His love for you or to help you to delight in Him first. So if that's you, I want you to take a bit of time to ask God right now to maybe just refresh you, to make His love known to you in a new way. If you've lost that delight in reading His Word or praying or even being in His presence, then why don't you ask God right now to just reignite that love, that first love that maybe you have lost. And right now we're going to try to do this silence and solitude together. So wherever you are, if there is space, you can sit down. Um, where, whatever that makes you feel comfortable. I want you to take a couple of deep breaths and just relax and just get into that place where you can focus. And then I want you to just say this very, very simple prayer. Father God, here I am. And I want you to close your eyes if you can. And just allow the presence of God to overwhelm you, and to fill you afresh right now. So I'm going to stop talking for the next couple of seconds. But whenever you start feeling your mind getting distracted again, just say that simple prayer again. Father God, here I am. It's just something that's really simple that you can do every single day. I want you to try this out, church. And I believe that as we embark on this series of cultivating holy habits into our lives, that as a church, we will find strength. It's going to fill us up with so much joy. It's going to give us the strength that we need, the peace that we need to embark on this journey with Jesus. And it's going to just give us so much joy as we do it. So be blessed this week as you give it a go. If you enjoyed this message, check out more on our Hope City KL YouTube and podcast channels. For those who want to know more about Jesus, find a Christian community to be a part of, or who are exploring faith, why not join us this coming Sunday for our 11 a.m. service? We are a growing, vibrant church in the heart of Pataling Jaya in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia with an interactive kids program for 2 to 12s, 
facilities for parents with under twos and freshly brewed coffee available for 30 minutes before each service. We're confident you'll leave encouraged. Find out more on our website, hopecity.my or follow us on Instagram and Facebook now. We can't wait to host you.